get started here. So good morning. I already started to have some uh, conversation. Welcome to the last face to face for the for the season. So uh, again, this is your guys' time to ask some questions. Um, if you weren't at the board meeting last night, uh, we can go over some of the topics. I did leave agendas back there if you got any questions on those and um, feel free to start you know, firing away. We've got the board members here, Scott and Ellen and Kelly. Larry's in the uh, in the audience there. He's a dual rolling member and, and board and then myself. So um, I'll just open it. Let's <laughs> so let's open it up with the with the first question, which was a which was a great question was, hey, looking at the agenda, um, you know, there's some committees that were left off the list, specifically pool committee. I did mention pool committee last night. Um, we are going to be working on the phase two pool and the plan for that, developing a scope of work for construction companies and pool contractors to basically start submitting quotes. Um, we've got four or five of them that we're looking at, and all of them are really stating the, the soonest that they could start acting on this would be fall of 2023. And that's if we start getting stuff in now. Um, but the question was, where's the pool committee and um, why is it on the list? Where uh, we mentioned last night um, that, you know, we're going to try and plan a workshop with the, the board in October. Committees will be on the list. We do have some committees that aren't listed on there that really haven't been active. The pool committee is not on that list because we, we don't have a liaison yet from from the board. but we have that that pool committee is well represented with uh, with board members. We have Kelly on it, Ellen, uh, Jenny Hager, um, Brian Elling, who was a former board member. He was our liaison when he rotated off. Um, we didn't really put a, a liaison onto that, but Kel uh, Brian is still very active in that. So um, we'll get an update on the committees. So great, great question on that. What other questions? Comments do you guys have? I wrote in two of them. Okay. Um, you want me to go right to the right in ones? Sure. Okay. We'll go right into the right in ones. Uh, site 815. No. Nope. nope, not you. That's you. Um, what is the procedure for getting dead trees cut that are in the green area and are threatening your trailer? Contacted the park inspector, left a verbal and written request, and uh, have not had a follow up as of yet. Um, so the the process of that is the park inspector is out in the park um, every day. Actually, he has a tree <clears throat> tracking list that he has in his office. We identify dead ones first and then dead ones that um, pose a threat. So I don't know how long this one's been out there, if it's been out there a while. Well, it's, it's not quite like that, but limbs fall every, okay. every weekend I come. There's more limbs now. <laughs> right. You probably have that too. No. Okay. Phase two. Yeah. Eight fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I used to be in 982, so I know the area kind of. You know. No, we, just had, we just spent three thousand dollars at two oaks in front. We finally, after years, got permission to have cut. It was three thousand dollars. They had dropped limbs limp all right on our car two weekends ago and mm. smashed the hood. Oh. And okay. you, we. Like I said in my note there, 15 years ago, one of those pine trees, they're 50 foot pine trees, fell right on the door of that, called the park. They would do nothing about it. Husband and I cut it up and hauled it over to the dumps. And well, there's still parts of it there. We couldn't carry the parts that were huge. They right. rotted for the 15 years. But okay. now they now two more are gonna fall. Okay. They'll smash our trailer. These are even closer. What's like Right off our deck. Right. So we'll um we'll we'll add that one to to Jeff's list to go take a look at it. But your question on procedure, he is out in the park, um, and he also has regular tree service uh, companies that come out. It's a trim, lot of trim, yep, job. Tr uh, trim trees, remove trees. They will also identify any dead trees that may pose a hazard. So dead trees that pose a hazard, whether safety, property. Those those tend to get priority. Um, then, if it if it's a live tree, we get this a lot. Hey, 
this tree is you know invasive to me if it's a live tree we try not to we try not to remove those we want to we want to keep the the live trees um, right so Mm. Well, well they have been like down as most down there's been another ten that have been cut. Then those these are all live trees. Any of the live trees that have been cut, to my knowledge, have been identified as there's something wrong with them. Well, maybe that's that's cut. why they're being that's why they're being cut. So um that's the process. We'll get the we'll get yours added to the list. When can I expect a reply of uh, a date of uh, some some knowledge that I've written. That let me happened. let me talk to Jeff on Monday. Okay. Um, I'll commit to if you don't hear something by Wednesday of next week. Give me a, our neighbor me. Terry complained for two years about why I'm finding that's my fault of my husband because this one the ones I'm talking about are at least a foot in diameter. Hers was like eight inches in diameter. My husband just went over and finally cut the thing because. The park was doing nothing. Was it in the green space or was yes. it? Okay. Yeah. There's one in the middle of the uh, up at the course. It's in bad shape. About half hollowed out right now. It's an unfortunate yeah. video. Yeah, we're we're aware of that one. We don't okay. we don't have a plan on that <laughs> to be honest with you. Because to your point, it's in a bad spot. So yeah. yeah. Did the Park service do the tree cuttings in the condos? No, the condos, from what I understand, have their own landscaping. Oh, you want to go? Oh, yeah, we have our own landscaping company that takes care of our stuff. Or we have a crew of men um, that like to putz around every week, and mm -hmm. depending on what the size, is, they might take care of that themselves. And our Wednesday crew took out one the other day. I didn't know the park service did. Yeah, no. no. Okay, question on eleven forty two. Yes, me. All right. So you have two questions. I have two questions. One, um, phase three is the largest number of campsites here at Sand Pines. One of the biggest uh complaints I hear from campers is regarding our phase three laundry facilities. First complaint is there no change machine in our laundry mat. Second complaint. Why don't we have at least one large washer for washing wet bedding after sleeping in tents during thunderstorms? Has there been any talk about getting a, a change machine and one larger washer in phase three laundry facility? So this is the first time I've heard of this issue. Yes, it's, no. it's a common problem over there because we get a lot of tenors that come in. Mm -hmm. We get storms, all the bedding's wet, and they've used every machine. And then they have to come to the store to try to get change because there's no changer over there. So. This is good timing because in the fall, Wash Inc. comes in every fall and they give me a list of what I call uptime and downtime of all the machines. Mm -hmm. um, because when I first started, this was like one of the first things that was elevated to me was there's red tags on these things all the time. Yeah, <laughs> they they actually and the serviceability of that Wash Inc. They were here to collect the money, but they weren't really here to maintain the machine well we had problems with all the point machines just yeah. this past week you went to home and the main was out both machines there phase six don't have one anymore i guess it broke down so they took it out so phase five is the only place to get changed so um two things one they they're coming in this fall they're giving us a report of here's what's how the machines have been working um they'll make recommendations on which ones need to be replaced our contract is up as well. The contract was signed. It's a, it was a 10 year contract mm -hmm. and that I want to believe ends at the end of next year. So one of the things that we've been talking about in the contract is if we renew the contract, uh, I'm not a fan of being locked into somebody for 10 years. So how do we shrink that down a little bit? And number two is if we sign a new contract, here are the things that Sandy Pines needs larger machine and phase three. Uh, we'll add that to the list. Um, new machines all around because some of them have you know, a, they're down all the time. Right. Now it it is not as bad as what was originally brought to my attention with all these red tags because we 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 physically have gone in there. I've gone in there with washing and looked at the red tags and they open it up. They put they put money in them and they work. So. The theory is. I've heard the theory. <laughs> the theory is, 
I'm going to save this machine for me until I get back. I'm going to put a red tag on it and I'm going to go grab some breakfast or coffee and then I'm going to come back and then put um, that. That is the theory because I would say probably 50% of the red tags that we tested were operational. Mm. Now, change machines. One of the things that Washington is going to, and um, I, I actually want to interview the community down in Florida that has done this. They've gotten rid of change machines. They've gone to an app where you preload everything and then you basically scan the, the QR code on the machine and you pay for it that way. Okay, and there's an issue with that. Yes. You have a lot of, I don't want to say old timers, mm -hmm. that are technology challenged. They don't have iPhones mm -hmm. to put these apps on to be able to scan. So how are we going to service that? So I don't have an answer for you yet, but the <laughs> community that they're giving me all the data on that I'm going to call on is an age appropriate in your area of what you just said, an age appropriate community that that was their number one hurdle that they said trying to implement it at this community. Right. And now they figured it out and they love it. They, they're like, I don't have to carry change around. I don't have to put a dollar in, have it kick back out, put a dollar in and have it kick back out. They scan it right on their app. So, so campers would also have to load this. To be campers able to would have to load okay. that app as well. The app would be available to everybody. And then, you know, we would have like an instruction as you walk in. Kind of like what we have now is we have an instruction of if the machine is down, scan the QR code. And that's kind of their, that's how they do their job orders to come out and fix things. And some people are doing that, some people aren't. Okay. So. Yeah, but, that's important. If there's one that's broken. Make sure you report it to the company, not to the park. I'm going to get to our second question, then I'll get to it. Okay. Because the big machine in our little village over there yep. has not worked for a year and a half. That one's supposed to be replaced this way. I know it says it's to be replaced, but it seems like you have to get one in six months. No. A absolutely not, because that's one of the things that that has been the number one issue that's come up to us is that large machine in the retail area is not working, does not continue to work. It just takes people's money. Um, so it's, what, working. Yeah, it's, right. it's working for them. It's not working. Uh, but the, the challenge is, and we hear it all the time, um, availability of parts and availability of machines. They've gone to Indiana, they've gone uh, further south, they've gone out west. Those larger machines, they just they just can't get. So and that's that's again what 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 I'm getting told by the members is that one needs to be fixed. We want a larger machine in phase three. And I, I don't know if there's one in phase five, six, and that one and then and that. But so we, we want we we at least want a large machine in each location. Is Perfect. What is what we're asking for. So, so they be more in phase three with all the tenors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Because, yeah, there's times that you try to, but and, you know, they're, they're constantly in use when we've got the campers there on the weekends. Yeah. You can't get into the laundry man. Okay. Um, so back to your second question. Um, you want to summarize it for me or you want me to read the whole thing? Sure. <laughs> okay. My main point was back a few weeks ago, we had those storms that moved through that knocked out power oh, in that yeah. cable. Just several areas in the park. Um, originally, they said it would be on Tuesday, then Wednesday, then they were talking Friday, but that wasn't the main issue. The main issue is, okay, the storms were severe enough, but they could have been worse. It could have been a tornado. We were blocked in both directions. Nobody in, could get into Phase 3. Nobody could get out because we had trees down across the road on both sides. My issue is, what happens if we had a medical emergency and they could not get into Phase 3? Say lightning struck and caused a fire. Tree came down on a trailer, somebody was trapped, somebody had a heart attack. Every minute counts. So my question is, why can't we get another gate? The other problem we have is you come in on a Thursday or a Friday between three and six, you're lined up down that road five and six feet waiting on campers coming through. So my proposal was by the bridge where the old golf cart used to run, why could you not continue that down there and put another gate in? If you look at the main side over here, you've got one going into phase two, one going by the administration building. You got the main guard gate. 
You got one at phase four, you got one at the chapel, and you have the other one when you have large crowds over there by the chapel for traffic flow. Well, I'm also in phase three. So yeah. I'm sure you can. I looked at, I saw your, your message, and I looked at that corner. There's so much going on there. I think it would be better further up on 26 down closer. Do you know where that that pedestrian path has been cut back into um, the where those vacant the vacant land is along 26? Um, I want to say about where Troy's place is. You know where Troy's place is? That's going to be going across the lake. No, 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 no. It's it's so you're talking right at the end of where the lake is yeah. coming across it's a little bit up, about halfway in between. Okay. okay, I would think that would be better. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I'm just a board member, but I would think that would be better because there's so much going on in that little corner. You've got people coming every which way from that bridge. And if it was a possibility, that's what I would think would be. Well, any place. Yeah, I would think right. the way I'm thinking is where the so old well. path used to go. So right we'd be on the other side, and then we would have to maybe have a sign there that says campers have to use the main gate right. for you. I, but I think that that okay. location would be too close to that corner. I don't care where they put it as long as somewhere. No, I'm 26, so we I don't run into this problem again <laughs> because I'm thinking right. if that happened, we could be sued. If so, somebody died and we couldn't get emergency yeah. response. Maybe, maybe another what if you're looking at maybe another that could be activated in, in, the, in the needs of emergency. But right. you know, the backup you're talking about, we have that all the time on 28th Street. You know, you get time for yeah, the have a second lane. There'll yeah. be people, there'll be people lined up down both ends of the uh, of the drive and street just trying to get in. So I'm not what but you've got multiple other entrances that you well, can you utilize. Still, I mean, if you don't have the same campers, yeah, you'll have the same trailer campers coming just in. that main gate. Right. But, but, but as it, I understand, as it's backed up, the members have other options. They got other options. Yeah, yeah they so, have other options. We don't. We have to sit there and wait. So we can we can add that to the list so, as as we start talking about projects and things to work on in the off season. Yeah, because I don't um, think it costs that much just to cut that fence down, put a gate in there, and then run it out to twenty six. The, so if they happen in the future, we'd have a way to get in and out of there. The 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 challenge again, I think I would agree with Ellen. I'm I'm not a fan of when I was reading that that corner there because you're you're gonna have to start thinking about what happens if you get backups and if you get backups underneath that bridge yeah. going back towards um what is that 136 and 136, towards the yeah. the Grand yeah, Valley Fallers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 As long as there's yeah. members yeah. that yeah. connection to 120 or yeah. 26. Just a members only and you know, and, yeah, so. and even if we didn't have an exit there, I think it would. Yeah, because a lot of people tried to get out to come over to get gas for their generators. Yeah. They got turned around. They went the other way. And they couldn't go out that, that way because there were trees down across the road. Yeah, it, it took them a little bit to get that cleaned up. Yeah, I, I went up over the bridge of my golf cart and flashed in the thunder, but. Actually, <laughs> 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 so you fall on purpose to try to lock her in. Oh, right. you did. <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> While she used the golf cart, came across the bridge. I'm smart. So has has there been any? What about further down the? Is it would there be an access? I'm not familiar with phase three. Not at all. If if you, you have to go, you would have to go way a ways down 136 mm -hmm. before you even get a turn off road. Yeah. Well, and there's a lot of trees along there's the lot, that coming down. They that do road, it all the time. And that road up further um, east is pretty narrow it narrows down yeah. Yeah. after yeah. sandy pines you know it's kind of like a farm road back in there and uh, there aren't all of the sites um there are sites that back right up to that road all the way down all the way to the right. fence right but if you come around the other way there's that whole strip little narrow That's strip okay. but there's no site yes so I do like your idea of moving it further down away from yeah, the bridge. Yeah, because I, I went out after I read your, you know, your email, I went out and looked and thought, this might be better. Okay. But yeah, yeah. it might be a little better because you know, we need to kind of get away from that corner. Oh, right. I think first thing, Jeff, you should check with the county. They may not even allow another entrance. Off well, the that, so I, yeah, you're right. That's where my, my thought process is going is any anything that we're going to add for an entrance or impact county roads, you know, if, even the bridge going over it, we Monterey had to. Township or we, it would be Monterey, Monterey Township. Monterey. Um, where, and the reason why I was asking 
further down the dirt road is during the during the off season. We do this every year. We we set up a meeting with Salem and Monterey and where we have kind of paved that I know. paved that dirt road. <laughs> yeah. One of the and not throwing anybody under the bus, but one of the townships is very in favor and supporting of us. The other township is not. So we're collectively trying to figure out how to make that happen because that's been on the list forever from what yeah, I understand. Yeah. And if we're gonna pave that, you still have to get township county approval. Would that be an opportunity to kind of get into further down that road? If yeah, not, we then some of the trees down. Then if not, then still over the, run into the trees going across the road. Yeah, and, and at the very least, I think you could move the um, garbage compactor and make two lanes and have have a member only access lane there but that doesn't really answer her concern right. the only way it would answer my concern is coming in there and clearing them trees so that it's not going to block the road during the storm again where you can get out right. well consumers had was coming in and trimming those trees they just hadn't gotten to that area yeah, yeah they've you been know, trimming them all along right 26. and they're they're supposed to trim these the ones up the road too they haven't got there yeah, well, I talked to Jeff yeah. about that before you yeah. got here. It's like, who was responsible? Because we still got trees that came down that are just leaning. They're just leaning. Up, and it's like, the you get another wind, we're going to be blacked in again. Yeah, they're in the, they're in the, I think they're in the right of way. They are. Uh, yeah, I think so as well. So. I've, I've noticed that. Okay. Okay, good questions. Um, Great phase three representation. Did, did we answer yours, your second well, one? Well, I was just going to chime in when she said something about the large washer. Okay. Uh, because when I'm in that long man over there, people are squawking all the time. Yeah. Are great. They're full of stuff and two washers are working. Okay. All right. We'll 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 try and get that addressed for you. Uh site two zero two. I've been a member at Sandy Pine since twenty eleven. I'm mostly weekender. I have retired to only one day a week and I'm looking to join a committee. That's me. Oh, That's you? Okay. You want to, rather than me reading it, you want to, you want to ask your question? I talked to Ellen last night. Yeah. Okay. We had a conversation. All right. But what I shared with her was the best way, and I also shared with Mary, the best way to get on a committee is to go to the official website. There's an application you can fill out and it tells you who to send it to. The person you email it to is Jeanette, and she does a great job of funneling those to the chairperson who then is going to make contact and invite you to a meeting. So get the process. If we were on the committee, how many times a year would we meet? They're, they're uh, on once a week, once a yeah, month, once a Yeah, they're month. all different. So to give you an idea, the pool committee will probably start ramping up next season with meeting like almost every week. Um, what we had with the late committee when we first got the late committee together, we met every week, including during the off season. Um, you know, rules, safety, and security, they'll meet maybe once or twice a month and throughout the season, and then take, have some takeaways to work on in the off season and then come back and pull everybody together. So it just depends on the on, on the committee. So but what we're at the end of the season, what we're doing is we assign those liaisons. We also reach out to the, the committee chairs, get us your dates because again, the off season, we're putting the calendars together, both operationally and the ones that can go out to print. And we can then start communicating when these committees are gonna meet off. And I'm not sure about safety and security, but on a rules committee, if, if the board hasn't assigned us a topic that they would like us to look at and we've not received things from the members if we don't have anything to work on we'll cancel the meeting because we don't want to waste the members time right. they don't mean just <laughs> that was my question yeah i thought that was a social <laughs> 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 yeah, right. uh site 5114 or are you here? Okay. Um, you've already placed new charges for internet service on our bills this year. When will the service be available and why am I paying for something I cannot use right now? 
So um, this has been talked about many times during during the season. We've had town halls on this. So yes, it is on your dues. Um, you know, it did pass. So thank you for those that voted um, throughout the seat uh, at the 20th annual election, and thank you for the yes vote on that. Um, but you know, we had talked about this. This is this is going to be on your dues, and now we are starting to meet with Spectrum on, you know. Uh, we had a site visit on Wednesday with their construction team. They drove around the area. They're putting their plan together. Um, you know, we're we're having activity during the off season. So, technically, what we've talked to Spectrum about is this transition. Uh, you know, don't shut off service while we're going through this transition, and we we don't have the details laid out yet, but. As this thing starts ramping up and we get to transition from old to new, the old is going to get continued to be extended. There's not going to be any additional costs for extending that old. So again, if they, I don't even want to say it, but if they miss the April 15 date, which we're we're really pushing them to, you're still going to have that old service until the new service gets kicked on. So as an example, if anybody's leaving from Florida, um, you know, Larry, I know you guys take off for Florida. So if Larry takes off for Florida and doesn't come back until May, right? And hypothetically, if he has cameras connected to his internet that he uses while he's gone, that service is not going to get shut off. That's the plan right now. So you are getting charged for dues. We are already meeting every week with Spectrum. We're starting to make some ground on the plan and when this will get rolled up. It's 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 just a it's a timing thing with we added it into the dues and when you guys come back it should be operational and ready to go rather than charging you at the end of the season. Are they running all new cable line through there too? <clears throat> Not all. So right now, no. again, we have um, from what I understand we have one or two nodes that everything kind of connects to and then goes out through cable. Okay. Right. They're adding five or six. So we should have a total of seven or eight nodes. I was and, wondering because if they're coming in with trenchers, it's like, okay, are they going to identify underground sprinkling lines? So that and that's that was the discussion on um, Wednesday. So they actually late yesterday afternoon before the board meeting, they came up with here's the plan and here's where they need a directional board to lay new fiber op optics and new cable okay. to connect the nodes. So Ben uh, from maintenance has more history on this place than obviously I do. And we've been very clear. If you go two, three, four feet deep, it's spaghetti. Mm -hmm. You got water lines, you right. got underlying right. sprinkling, you've got old cable. It's so our direction to them is you need to go six to eight feet deep underneath everything and then out. So we have not had a chance to review their plan on where they're doing the and how they're doing directional boring. Um, to lay that fiber optics. We just got that late Friday. So okay. it's just hopefully they would notify you if they got to go through your yard. So absolutely. Okay, I've got underground scooping lines here. I don't know what you get them. Right. Yes. And they would be going through a lot through people's yep. yards. It's going to be primarily in green areas. From from what from what I've seen, and, and again, I, I have the caveat that I haven't seen everything yet that they submitted. Um, ben and I are going to review it on Monday. Okay. But what we had talked about and what we had seen from their original plan with the overlay of the park, a lot of it is one in green area and two, we may have to go outside along the perimeter of the car okay. and then come in. Okay. So, yes. For us that are not tech savvy, do, how do we get this in the spring when we come back? Stay tuned. We will. We will. We will roll out a plan. Yeah. Um, so we're paying for it. Yep. Paying for yep. six months over the winter. Yep. And I don't have cable. Uh -huh. I have. I mean, I have cable TV, but yep. I don't cable have internet. Yep. So yep. it's like, uh, you see a black smoke coming up. It's because the computer and everything <laughs> should be out. Right. So that that is we have we have really three things that we're working on in the off season. One with the sales team is that plan on building customer accounts. Each one of you will have a separate account, having you guys contacted and communicated so then you can deal directly with Spectrum to confirm all your information in that account and then decide 
when and how you want your equipment. Do you want it delivered here to Sandy Pines? And then you do your install yourself or with some help from somebody. Stay tuned on that as well. We're going to try and see if we can get some tech savvy people to help um, non tech savvy people throughout the park. Or there's also a professional service fee that they'll charge in. I, I've mm -hmm. heard anywhere from $49.99 to $99.99. I don't know the details on the pricing yet, but they will deliver the equipment to you and install it for you. And so we're working with that on the sales team on building accounts, getting the communication. How are we going to do this individually with each one of you? And then the construction team, the actual lifting of the, the heavy stuff and digging holes and connecting everything and testing everything. And the new equipment, it, it, it's all combined. From, router and modem all from combined. what from what I understand, it's it's uh, it's combined. Um, I I do have I do have questions on that though that I need them to answer for me because when I read when I read some of the date when, when I read some of the detail, Wi-Fi six router, I'm interpreting as it's a separate router. They're communicating that's all built in together. Well, it, uh, yeah, it, it, Comcast it, had it all built in together. Right. It was just one piece of equipment. I had the same thing with Xfinity at, at my house. So. Yeah. Wi-Fi and the router are together. That, that's okay, but you can't have the TV box in the same unit. Right? You can't have the TV box in that. The uh, TV box would be separate. Right, because yeah. that's in my house all the Yep, yeah. TV box would be separate. So, <laughs> so we're, again, those are part of the details that I'm already getting the, hey, where, where are we at with this from members? And we are meeting on a regular basis to roll out these plans. Yes. In the brochure or whatever that was that was handed out before the vote, mm -hmm. they said something about Spectrum would be on site. Are they going to have an office? Because I live over there where people have had barely any internet and have been paying for it all year and they couldn't catch up with anybody and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, no, I don't have it, so I'm not even so Spectrum it. Spectrum has an office, but they're not going to have an office at Sandy Pines. So the closest mm -hmm. office would be Holland. And again, the, the challenge has been when there's been any technical issues, originally you would come to Sue Flowers, a member service, or Abby, a member service, get your name on a list. We would call, we would do the scheduling, and then they would come out. And then they tried to move us to call us directly with this 188 number. I would say 25% of the time that worked, and then we were still fielding calls. That was a division that was used to kind of a residential. Um, right, because we didn't have yeah. individual accounts. Same right. kinds is under one account. Right. So now we're moving to a completely different, it's called Community Solutions, and this is all they do. They do communities like this. They build up their own accounts for you, and then if you have any connectivity or service issues, you call them directly and they have your account. Oh, you're Mrs. So-and-so and you're at Sandy Pines and here's, uh, yes, we can send a tech out to you. So they're, the plan is to remove us, the middle person, and you guys deal directly with Spectrum. Because when you call us and say, hey, I'm not getting connectivity on stuff, we're not technical experts. And then we're trying to explain that to them to get you a service call. And we may say, hey, your your internet's down. And you're like, yeah, I have my internet's fine. It's my cable. So well, get us out of it. Five percent that didn't get service answered. That's over in that section because it has been for two months. I get the neighborhood. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Why doesn't Spectrum just put first? Take a person that's here seasonally and have them do it a day a week. And well, originally that um, two things on that. So good question. Um, you know, the question was why doesn't Spectrum have tech technicians here, right? On a regular uh, basis. The person to take to organize. Yeah. Keep stuff flowing back and forth. It, it's coming down to they're they're just as short staffed as anybody. Is everybody else? Right? Well, they need to take a person. They need to person. <laughs> yeah. Train them. Train them. Now again. When you look at Sandy Pines, and you know, I get that a lot. Well, you need to tell them who we yeah. are. So I did that when I first started. Do you know who we are? And they're like, Yeah, we're a forty-three billion dollar company, and I don't even, I don't even see yeah, who you are. So. All right. Uh, next question. So can I piggyback a question? Yeah. Because uh, I missed the meetings. 
how close would that fiber come to my trip? Um, I won't have it. I won't have an answer for you until I actually give you the plans on Monday. So again, in, in general, I, I don't. You're asking the wrong person on that. I can get that answered for you from Ben or Spectrum. I, I don't know how close the fiber is going to come to the trailers. And that would probably be different case by case. Yeah. So, and again, that new fiber optics is going to connect to the nodes, and then the nodes are going to connect out similar to what similar to what we have now. So, um, site 820. Back in March, we wrote about ADA lounge chairs for adult pools, sent pictures with dimensions, so easy to get out of. I haven't heard back. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's cheaper than the bridge. Uh, another thing I was wondering is how all these pop machines by CCs came up to be because every time I take my grandchildren to the bathroom, they ask for pop. So I'm curious. Um, you know, whose idea was it? How much is the park making? And are we getting maintenance and electricity covered um, on on this agreement? So number one, I think I've, I, I and again, I see the site number and the name on here. We have addressed the ADA chairs. Um, when we when we tried to order them before, they were not available. When we did get the order for them, they had a long lead time, so we canceled the order. We're looking at it again this off season. We agree. We think it's a good idea. We're just trying to get them. Um, well, let me comment. Because it is one of my neighbors, and this fellow has two bad ankles as well as hips. And when he sits in those lunch chairs over there. She has to get somebody to help her get him out of the lawn chair. Yeah. Whereas down wherever they go, there's there's prop, there's hard arms on the chair so he can stand up. Yeah, when we can get them, we'll get them. Okay, well, I just said, you know, for and people that didn't understand. No, nope, right. understand. We have a lot of people who benefit from those um, because they're they're higher up. They have the support on the arms, but they're also higher up. So you're not having to go down this far. Right. And somebody, if they had like a walker or something and it was higher up, then they would have an easier time moving themselves around. As soon as we can get them, we'll get them. We, it's, this has been on our radar for years. In the interim, why not just chairs like that? Well, we do have chairs like that. Okay. We do have, there are straight up chairs like that. And there are a lot of people who use those, but there are people who want a lounge chair. Well, I understand. And I think especially in, in the adult pool area, it would be it would be good to do that. But in the meantime, people can use regular chairs and they're available at all the pools. Uh, the second question in regards to the, the pop machines. So we had a sprinkling of pop machines around here and they were down all the time. They weren't working. We had, you know, one by um, administration, I think we had a vending machine in the maintenance area in the break room, and we had vending machines, I want to say four or five total. Um, the feedback from the members are, hey, get these things out of here. They're, they're not working. So we did sign a deal with um, a distributor for Coke, and we have added more based on where we thought foot traffic was going to be at. So um, ironically, I was uh, t talking to that individual uh, after the board meeting yesterday uh, via text. We'll sit down this off season and we're going to go over the numbers and do we pull some out because he wasn't getting the numbers that he thought he was. We weren't getting the members to utilize that and maybe they're in a bad spot. So our, part of the agreement is that, you know, we get we get a percentage of those sales. And the vendor is responsible for the maintenance of the machines. They install them, they take care of them, they fill the pop. If there's any technical issues with them, he's 100% responsible for it. And yes, they are plugged in and utilize our electricity. But again, that's part of here's what we had X percent for the sales. What did we get out of that? Here's what we can kind of estimate what our electrical costs are. Are we making money? Are we losing money? Are we breaking even? So, and then we'll decide, do we, do we leave all of them or do we, uh, do we skinny it down? Now, probably around the middle of October, you will see he will come in, his team will come in and they will remove the pot machines during the winter. 
what we had before was those things were here on a regular basis. So the kind of, yeah, the conversation would be, do we remove the ones just on the exterior? Um, because, you know, some of the CCs, you know, like the laundromat, there's a couple in the laundromat, right? So if that's still going to be utilized during the season. Do we leave that? Do we live that in there or not? The plan is to remove all of them in the off season. So Ellen, do we have any by the CC where the campers are in phase three? Yes. 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 Yeah. It's on the side. It's on the side of the building. You right can't, there. if you go by the, just go by the front, you can't really see it, but it's on the side. I'm talking the one by me. Oh. Where the campers are. Yeah, camp, that's right. That's right. right. Used to be. Okay. Um, yeah, there's one on the side. Okay. It's I don't ever know that was the rest from there. So there's, not, yeah, there's one on the side. Okay. And they do, for people concerned about, you know, selling of pot and the sugar and all that, they do sell water. Right. <laughs> yes. I would say one of the issues with the machines is when I looked, they were 285 for a bottle. That's a dollar more than I paid at the Vending machine at work, which I thought was high. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> what's what's the ounces? Because they we did increase the the size of the bottles and the the ounces from the original. The ones at work are twenty ounce. Here, you got a good deal. <laughs> go to a you go to Monterey Pine store. They're two sixty nine plus deposit. plus deposit. If you stop at a Walgreens, they're two fifty or two for four. You know, it's if if people it's don't want to spend that much, they don't have to. Right. But you know, it's it's about convenience. Well, I understand, but if they're complaining that we're not getting the volume, then it might be well, the contributing yeah. factor. Right. That's yeah. Right. And, yeah. And well, I I don't know if they're complaining yet or not. We'll go through the numbers. So, yeah. Quick compliment. When I saw those pot machines around, I thought, oh, here we go. We're going to have blood litter up the in game. And I have to say, I only picked up one bottle all season. The bottle is fun. Well, I'm just saying, I, I see there because we have other issues yeah. where right. people are frivolous with. Yeah, and the water bottles. The, water the water garbage bottles was don't not there that okay. I anticipated. Good. So. Thank you. Thank you for the positive comment. Uh, it's like 1048. Tennis court phase three has not been maintained and is pretty in pretty bad shape. Is there a plan to repair this court and replace it with something else that members can utilize? Uh, repair and replace are two different things, but Ben and the maintenance crew, they do have a rotating schedule on repair of courts and things of that nature. The one that came up was over by the rec center. And if you the the tennis court closest to the parking lot and the rec department, if you look at that, what we did is we put that um, vinyl sport court in it, which is uh, a bunch of square pieces, almost like a checkerboard that the water can drain through. It's got square holes in it um, that has a longer life and is easier to maintain and it's flexible. So, and we tried that over there because that land over there is built on basically, yes, marsh. <laughs> I was going to say something, but yes, marsh. <laughs> so that land moves a lot, which is causing a lot of the, the cracking of the courts. And so we tried that sport court over there to see how it goes. Now we've gotten feedback from pickleballers that that doesn't work, that sport court doesn't work for pickleball. Uh, so, um, but to answer the question from the member, we do have a rotating schedule of uh, repairing or maintaining or replacing. Uh, I'd have to check and see where phase three is on the list. I didn't have a chance to catch up with maintenance. Um, but if this one works well, we might think about in phase three adding sport court over there as well. Um, and then we've got some other pickleball requests for phase three and a couple other pickleball areas. So. That Court does get used a lot. Camper shoes are a little used, and there's some families right along the area. Oh, don't think it doesn't get a fix. Right. Uh, let's see. 1048 again. There are many locations throughout the park that have had water hookups at the road updated to be at a single post. Are there plans to continue to replace these for all sites in the off season? And if so, what are the areas next? 
yes, there are there are plans. Um, when I respond to this individual, I can I can get those plans out from from maintenance. So what what they're talking about, if you haven't seen it, because I know they've been in phase two, is um, I the water risers are going vertical now, and then you have the different sections for your water with tags on them, and it's a little it's a little bit of a better system. They started that um, I want to say actually the fall of. 20, yeah, they started the fall of 2020, then they did it again in 2021. So there is a plan to try and update those um, as many as possible throughout the park. Where they're focusing this year, I don't have an answer for it. But they also try to, ones that are in really, really bad shape, they'll replace those yes. instead of trying to fix them. I know the one in front of my place was leaking really badly and I was hoping they would replace it, but they actually came in and did a quick repair on it and it's fine. Well, they already put some tags on all of them mm -hmm. in phase three. Yeah, well, by you. They haven't done the park area. Well, they haven't got there. So. <laughs> we got some leaking. Some of my horses are like from the main. We just fixed one that was leaking. Okay. <laughs> so there is a plan, and there, they will be going through throughout the park. Um, let's see here. Another question for 10, from 1048. The past two seasons, the rec department has offered pickleball lessons on Thursday evenings for adults and on Saturday mornings for kids, which has led to many more members with a desire to play. Uh, we are regular players at the recreation courts, and this year during the busy summer months, we have noticed that the courts, the four courts are always full in the mornings, and many days there are several people waiting to play. I have asked others to that play at phase two courts, and they have told me that they have 12 players regularly on most days, or just two courts and have had up to 16. So we have open play at both locations. Can we have open play at both locations in the mornings, generally between 8 and 10, 8 and 11 during the summer before it gets too hot? If you have a small group or family that just wants to play together, there are no open courts in the morning. Would it help if members put a petition together with signatures that shows the level of interest so the board knows how many? pickleball players that are really in the park and is there anything else that we as members could do to help justify adding more pickleball courts in the near future um anybody want to touch the oh, I pickleball um okay, okay. I've, ta I've talked to some people that have places in florida and they have pickleball and reading that and talking to a few other people I cannot see spending the money to build additional courts so that more people can use it for two hours in the morning. I know it takes time. You know, we can try to do like lessons and things later, but in Florida, they play, all you know, all that. They play till 10 o'clock at night. And I think we can do some, do some scheduling. You know, we don't, we don't want to have lessons and stuff there during the time that the people want to play. But as far as building more, so, I mean, you can come by at six o'clock at night. There's nobody there. We need to utilize some more what we have. If you put too many in, though, and I'm not in front of it. I do think yeah. there is a need for it. Okay. So, and I do see people down there more often than just the morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially start running these tournaments on Saturday, they could definitely use more. So um, go ahead. And it's all they, they it's not. They're taking them out in some areas of Florida because they're too noisy. Pickleball yeah, play is it. the noisy one sport and they're actually removing pickleball courts in some areas because the neighbors around there don't like the noise especially 24 hours a day almost because they should use so much right so they need more yeah <laughs> yes yeah the pickleball courts right behind me uh -huh. i never heard of the tennis courts and but pickleball is used way more than the okay. tennis court right. was yeah. so that was a good thing right because now it's utilized but like he says i would not want to listen to that you know 10 hours a day i wouldn't come at all on the weekends I mean. Correct. so i think um the first step to try and address this uh, is we we've hired a new rec manager um and abby greenfield she kind of grew up at sandy pines in the rec department she's now the full uh full-time rec manager and one of the things that we've talked about is 
operation hours and schedules. How do we how do we better utilize the things that we have up there? So, you know, have we thought about changing some of our pool hours around because we get asked about, hey, adult swim, laps, things like that. We don't get a lot of time. Adults don't get a lot of time to utilize that. Pickleball courts, um, if that's a, a challenge with utilizing it and getting it on, getting on the uh, pickleball court to, to use it. Let's take a look at, do we post and do we set some, some specific hours and try and schedule that before we then go spend money and build something brand new that we may not need. We may find out when we schedule this and if people, we can get people trained to adhere to that schedule, we may find out that that gets taken care of and people are getting that utilized. And you know, back to maybe Ellen's point that if 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 you don't want to you know do it in the morning, we do have hours in the afternoon. You may have to go to the afternoon to do that. But to spend the money because the next thing when when you anything we build around here, you know, people why we spend the money on stuff. We want to make certain that we we at least try to address it with a scheduling um, plan first before we go spend money and building new assets. Well, that has been one of the issues for phase three with the pool. There's a lot of time that pool is closed, and there's a lot of adults that would like to swim. And we have one that. people to put the swipe card in so that they could use it. Okay. So we have a quote for a swipe card, so. and that's been that's been brought up many times. And that's something that Abby is working with safety and security on. Um, the challenge that we we will have with swipe cards at phase three pool is. You're tired, not that you would do this, but just using it as an example. You're tired, you know, all right, hey kids, here's my card because it's an adult only swipe card. Here's my card, go do it. And then all of a sudden we find there's so that an injury the one over here? Um, at the adult pool, not not regularly, because there there's so many adults yeah. using that it, pool. <laughs> it, would, it would be a matter of making sure that people knew the rules and then there might right. be a few times that you have to correct people. Right. Right. No, no, it's 18 yeah. and over. Right. So, so, but we do have that. Abby, Abby's going to be addressing that. Yes, you have a question. Another kind of with, with the pickleball in the park and two being used late at night and all the lights on. I did not detect near the golf cart trouble over there is when we didn't have lights. <laughs> Security was always over there last year. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't see that problem because it's lit up like a football field. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, you can detect who they are. <laughs> uh, you know what number to contact the courts? They got to license plates. Okay. 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 Ok
the state and the county have come back and said they they understand that there's a safety need here in specifically phase two and uh, phase one for a storm shelter. So what we have talked about with the board is what's our strategic, what's our plan, what's our strategy on trying to um, take some of that feedback from the membership and still come up with a safety um, resolution for the members in those areas. So we've heard anything from, um, you know, just knock down existing uh, CCs and build them like we have in uh, phase three. Um, we heard some comments last night about, you know, just go back to the way Sandy Pines used to do it and have a maintenance team do uh, the work and, and things of that nature. So, you know, um, we we have some we have some decisions we need to make on what's our plan for this. Um, if we the the challenge is we have support from the, it's a it's a good challenge. We have support from our township. We have support from our state. They would like to give us money. Does it have to be a giant building like we had for the short South Shore? Maybe not. Maybe it is skinning down a little bit. But in that core area, we have two issues. We have that phase one pavilion, the roof is a disaster, and the foundation of movement. Is the building usable? Technically, yeah, it's usable. But in order to maintain that, you still have to spend a significant amount of money on the roof. The roof is a disaster right now. So do you want to spend money? Do we as members want to spend money on a building that the foundation is moving towards the lake and it's not getting utilized a lot? Um, since we built this building, a lot of the activity that was in phase one pavilion, indoor pavilion has come here. So we don't want to spend money on a, an asset that either is A, not going to get utilized, or B, we don't know how long we're going to have it as it continue, as that foundation continues to move. The dairy dip is not in good shape either. I'm meeting with the dairy dip owner next week. He wants to understand what Sandy Pines' plan is because in the lease, Sandy Pines is responsible for that building. And that building, if a lot of you have been here for a while, you know, when this was an onion field, that's where the onion pickers originally lived in quarters to come and pick the onions. And if you walk through that building on the inside, it there's a challenge there. And we're gonna we're gonna have to have a decision of eventually one or both of those buildings are gonna have to be knocked down. And what are we gonna put in the place? Nothing. Well, I think the biggest thing that I heard was the location of where you wanted to put it. Okay. And then also you wanted to put all of these sports things in there. Mm -hmm. So now you got to have security there to make sure the kids don't ruin it. They say, get it off the beach. And why do we have to have all this indoor stuff? If it's raining, get it. Guess what, kids? You just don't play the game. Well, again, so part of the feedback on this building was it's a big empty building that's not being utilized. So yeah. let's put some activities in the next one. So again, you can utilize the the plan was you can utilize that building in the off season. Uh, you can utilize it when you have bad weather. That's why a lot of those activities were put in there because this building can you know well you're using it for committee meetings and there's no activities. It would be nice during bad weather or off season you could play pickleball. You could play shuffleboard. I think originally one of the plans was to put shuffleboard downstairs, and then we looked at it. There wasn't a lot of space and you're shuffling a hard puck against drywall and glass. Probably not a good idea. So we're trying to take in all that feedback and find out the best solution, but we have a safety solution with phase one and phase two. They don't have storm shelters. Some of the comments last night were, well, they're concrete buildings, so they are kind of storm. They're they're better than a trailer, but they're they're not storm shelters. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna hold up to a, a tornado, is what I've been told. Um, and then we have two buildings that are 50 years or older that the park is going to have to address. So it's either going to have to come, you know, 100% out of our pocket, or can we get some additional funds that people want us to take advantage of to address one or both of those? So let me get to her first and then, yes. Just brainstorming. Mm -hmm. Has anybody compared? 
what it's going to cost. I don't know what all those TCs is to fix that and stack it against something new. And I did hear the same thing you did. People don't want a building on the uh, floor. They don't want to be maybe something open. I did see that a couple people suggested something something more open and use this building form for covering. So, uh, yeah, good question. So, just high level numbers the storm shelters that were built in phase three uh, were about a million dollars back then when a piece yeah. back then when they built it. so add 30 40 percent on top of that for materials and labor um so but what are we going to spend anyway so you got to replace them eventually that's what i'm wondering agree stack those and, and that that, that goes prepared. back so what's our what's our strategy what's our, yes so the thought process, the, the thought process was a larger build the South Shore, a larger building like this, where you can house a bunch of people and, and all in one spot rather than people scattering to go to different areas throughout the park for safety. So if we want to pull back on that and say, all right, you have two or three um, CCs that are 50 years old. I, I heard a couple of people uh, after hours talking about the pull strings for showers and stuff like that, right? So how do how do we update that? If we knock those down, if you build two or three of them, you're spending you know two three million dollars anyways. And really, the cost that we were trying to cap for the South Shore for a larger building with some activities in it was two million bucks. So that at a high level, that's that's kind of the numbers. But you're right, we need to lay that out and then bring that. The other challenge that we have is we're getting asked to resubmit a different plan to try and take advantage of those funds. That resubmission is in 30 to 45 days. Again, it's during the off season. So we will probably start that process again. I haven't had a chance to talk to the board about do we want to start that process again or not, and then bring it up to a member vote next season um, with a different plan. Try and get some input from members. So, uh, hold on. She okay. she has. But let me remember this: thirty years ago, when we bought in, my daughter grew up here. She was like an only child. Her brother's ten years older, and we came all winter long. There was an indoor pool here. There was a restaurant here. She would swim. We would ice skate. We would go to the restaurant. And now, you know, this building sits here. Basically, not legally useless because we couldn't have this meeting on the other side of the lake. Um, could FEMA, could a restaurant be put in that the tables could be taken down if there should be a storm, of, you know, a tornado or something? I heard that this holds like a thousand people. There can't be more than, you know, 2,000 people here or whatever. During a tornado, people don't come if there's parking issue with a restaurant, though. They're not going to operate here in the off season because they're not going to make fun. That's well, commercial trucks, sure. But I, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying in the winter, that's not going to happen. Yeah, you know, you're not, we're not going to have a restaurant here, but in the off season, but they could make a ton of money in the summer. I believe that they're, they're probably not enough. It's six months that they're not giving. Yeah, and and you know a business, a business has to make money, yeah. and it has to be attractive, yeah. and to say you're going to only operate six months of the year, and you're not going to get a lot of people that want to do that. You're not going to get people that want to listen. Like spend the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's it's it was, but it was great. It's, and that was one of the the thought processes. And maybe we didn't communicate it well enough, but with the South Shore is, you know, we do have, you know, we'll have we'll plan on a fall fest in October, winter fest in January or February. You know, you have a larger building, you can do some outdoor activities for like a winter fest. You can move indoors for some indoor activities. We utilize this for some indoor activities downstairs and up here for winter fest. So it is it is tough to try and run a business, but we 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 try to u utilize the things that we have to the best of our ability. So yeah, question. I'll get um, to you later. What about 
Peggy and, and uh, Star burning some of the CCs. I'm sorry, so then Star burning some of the CCs. Okay. So the because windows, doors should have to replace. Yep. And roof tie down, maybe you might have to right. improve the roofing. You'd have to improve the roofing. And again, I'm not a structural engineer. Um, and I didn't sleep at a Holiday Inn Express last night. So <laughs> the, I know, right? The 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 my understanding is if you want to try and move the CCs into a storm level shelter where you could communicate to the population that it is a safe storm shelter, mm -hmm. even the brick structure would need to be addressed. Right. And that the foundation the brick, that the brick and the foundation would need to right. be addressed. The the footing requirements for a, an actual storm hardened shelter are pretty stringent and none of the buildings not the original building would meet that requirement for footings being considered a storm shelter. Look, yeah. All right, real quick, and I'll get to the sorry, right? Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, uh, you said something about the state and the township wanting more safety. Are they willing to kick in more money equal to the FEMA? Well, they're, what they're kicking in is the, the time and the support that help us get the grant from a from a money perspective. They don't they don't have actual cash that they're gonna they're gonna give Sandy Pines to to go after this. But we need but, their support. But we need in order yeah, yeah. that what they're doing is kind of the support through the entire process of Yes, this is a community. Yes, they will allow outdoor individuals come into this community. Yes, this is a true safety concern and a safety issue. That's the that's the support and the voting of trying to get us through the process. Yeah, that's, there are kind of support. like a bridge to FEMA. Right. They, they help yeah. us with FEMA. Yep. Larry, what you got? Yeah, you're talking about FEMA, let's go back to last year when they had that storm that knocked out the power to phase three. The very next day we had an EF zero tornado north of here. Well, those FEMA buildings were locked up. And a solution was to put the wells over there on a generator. Are we getting closer to that? That's done. Generator's done. Why did we yep. share phase three? Yep. Yep. Uh, the pump house had generator behind it. Yeah. So that didn't happen this year. That was right yeah, That's good. Yep. Because <laughs> Can't have a payment building because we'll lock the doors because the toilets are full. Right. Right. And that is part of the, you know, whether we do CCs in phase one and two over there or the larger building, that, that was a lesson learned from that that storm that we need we need generators. Uh, and on the South Shore building, that CC is CC7. So that was built later on than some of the other ones over there, but the pavilion and the uh, daycare center for add-ons. And so if you tore down the pavilion in the daycare center, maybe that CC is not in such a bad shape. Understand. Um, but could you demolish? Don't, and, yeah, I don't know you, how you build them. You can build, you can, if you go in the bathrooms, uh, you can see blocked off windows, and you the men's and yeah. women's, and then you can see where they added the uh, structure for the pavilion over the top of the uh, CC. So I, I don't know if they, how much the roofing they left the original CC there, but I, I understand the problem with the roof that if we neglect it long enough, it's just going to fall in on its own. Agreed. <clears throat> but even if we leave the CC there, it's on the beach and it's an eyesore from what I mean. Yeah. That's nice. Yeah. 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 Right. Yes. That's our department. Yeah. Now you said FEMA denied us the funds. Is that correct? Yeah, we we didn't we didn't pass the next stage to move into consideration going forward. So okay. they have a it, it went from a local or a regional to a national, mm -hmm. and we didn't make it to that next stage for consideration. So did they say why? I don't have that feedback yet. I'm gonna meet with them next week. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Was it meant to be? I guess. Right. There's no. Right. Yes. I'm having a senior meeting place. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I said I wanted to join the committee and I will get on the internet, but I am on the senior planning committee, which I don't even know if it's still there, because I guess Sue stepped down and yeah, yeah. But anyhow, um 
can we someday look at the plans that you had here for us to all look at? That we voted for on. this building that we voted on, where we were going to get a separate building with an in ground pool, or you know, that <laughs> uh, that's not going under that. Oh, that got voted down. We didn't, we didn't vote on this, but that was a, a plan that you're talking about. That was 2000, what was that, yeah. 2018, 2009? No, it wasn't. It was not being super standard. So I don't know why we have to plan and say, but if we go wrong, that guy voted down. That was that was voted down. That pool, that plan was voted down. So we never know, went back. We never went back. Now, and I understand where you're trying to go with this. Because um, I've talked to some other people, but I'm, for now, this building is not accessible to kids without their parents. They, they bring them in to go to the library. They may, we have all those meeting rooms downstairs that can be used for informal cards, um, things like that. So we do have some space here that can be used. Can we go to the pool with the jigsaw puzzle where you can there, come and go? If there are tables down there. I can't guarantee that nobody's ever going to disrupt that, you know, that that puzzle. Yeah, there are tables down there with tables. So one thing you can you can try. Yeah. So again, I know a couple of things. One, you're right. Two step students step down. Part of the discussion that Abby and I are having is. How do we bring in the senior adult activities or adult activities to rec? And how do we how do we get not forget about those activities, right? <clears throat> so that's what we're going to try and put a plan together to have that absorbed by rec. But Abby is going to need volunteers to to help with that. So um, you know, again, when you when you email me about the committee, I have a list of events that or things that you guys have done. From probably four or five different people, so you could add to that list to make certain we're not forgetting any, anything. But it, hypothetically, some of the stuff that comes off my head, poke around. So, all right, we're going to have somebody in the adult activities volunteer group lead poke around, and then we're going to have somebody lead karaoke, and we're going to have. So that's where Abby's going to need some help with some of those activities because we don't want to forget about them, and we want to add more to those activities. Um, this building specifically. I know it gets utilized a ton for the for the senior adult activities. I've seen cards here. I've seen you know some of the dancing here. I've seen a, a ton of those uh, potlucks and things of that nature. I know this building gets utilized. Um, we did communicate if you were at the board meeting last night an update on the outback. So you know we started in 2020, actually 2019 trying to resolve the issues that we had with those tenants. Um, resolution finally came at the end of the summer. You know, we had three claims against them that the court has sided with us on two of the three, and one of them will get resolved in October. They had 12 claims against Sandy Pines, and all of those were thrown out of court. Um, so we, we won on two of our three and we won against uh, the tenants on 12 of theirs. What does that mean is we have we have open space over there. So what you're gonna see you starting next week is a survey from communications to say, um, what do we wanna utilize that space for? Do we wanna put a restaurant in there? Do we wanna put another store? Do we wanna put a, you know, an adult gathering? We also have that library that's open over there next to it. So maybe you put a, a breakfast coffee shop where it used to be and off to the left we make that library a senior adult hangout and then you still wow. have a lounge wow. you know you know so bring some of those ideas up because they're you know we followed our court process we we tried to work with the tenants didn't work out the court has sided in our favor they're no longer tenants and because of some other things that has transpired, they're no longer members of the park. So they are, they are not here any longer. And we have an opportunity to make that space what we want. But also, please, like that survey is very important. Make sure you take these surveys, these online surveys, they pop up in your emails and they're, you know, on websites, social media, things like that. 
there's one, there's department surveys out there right now, and there's a rec survey. I should go out to that rec survey, and they will say, you know, if you have any suggestions, ideas, whatever, put your concern about not having the space. I'm not seeing a rec survey, and they come up. It's part of the department survey. Yeah. If you click on department there's survey, a rec there's oh, a rec know. survey in there. Go to that survey and insert in there. Have other people do it. We, we, we're hearing you. We're trying to figure it out. Um, but in the meantime, see, see if you can, while we're working on it, see if you can make one of those using those room steps here. I mean, you have this deck. You guys can get together. It wouldn't be the same as having a dedicated space. But, you know, you, this deck is beautiful. Those rooms are nice downstairs. You know, this is kind of limited to adults. So until we get it figured out, Freddie, try to move yeah, I, I just have a comment. You yeah. said something about surveys are in the department thing. It, can it be broadcast to everybody it so works. that it goes out like uh, there's going to be a storm at Sandy Pines so that everybody gets this thing? It I've works. not seen it. It works. It yeah, the, that's the rave. That's the rave system. Okay. So okay. Um, if you're not if you're not in the rave system, then you're not going to. No, get... I okay. thing, but I didn't get this. The survey. What's so the. I didn't get a rave on it. So no, you, I was talking about storm. I was talking about storm. Yeah, you, you didn't get a rave on the surveys, but we do those at the end of every year. They're on our website. I know he's posted it on Facebook. He's uh, posted it on all of the social media, and it's on the website as well. And so and maybe maybe you need to just send a rave to everybody that we have surveys that we'll work on over the winter. Okay. Uh, check yeah. it out because we can do that. Probably yeah. Yeah. there. Send something else out. Yep. You know, I'll have you send something out next week. Or we could all get used to this weekend. Okay. But is there on the website? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Y
So, so by the time they got up here, they had to throw all their food out. So I know we did. I know we did send two raves out. What that was not that. Was, uh, that was happened to do with the storm. It didn't have anything to do with power being out. I I I personally sent out one myself that said it. that it was a, a power outage due to the storm. And I gave timing on when that power was coming up. I see. I, yeah, I physically wanted to. Yeah, we so got a false Tuesday night finally, and somebody said the power's out, and I said, yeah. And yeah. he wanted to know, and I said, if you get down here just before tonight, the food will still be good. Mm -hmm. If you wait till tomorrow, everything in your refrigerator is going to have to throw out. So we did get some feedback from, you know, the last power outages, and what we are doing for rave system, there is only a certain amount of people that can get into that system mm -hmm. and send it out because we want to be very careful when we send out communication to everybody right right we are doing off-season training for each department now with the department heads and a backup so public safety can send a rave out they're here 24 7. they don't have access to that system probably doesn't make sense because there are safety and security right so we are doing rave training for each department head so they can when we have a storm roll through at 12 o'clock at night Third shift of public safety can send a rave out and let everybody know power's out, storm's gone through, Perfect. things of that nature. Yeah. We can do that. But on the other end of that, once once we as members get that initial message that says your power's out, you have to accept some own responsibility to get on consumers and there's a link and you can put your address and it'll tell you from consumers themselves how long they anticipate it to be out. And and now and then if you're signed on to their thing, they also send you messages giving you updates. So you, we as members can't put all the pressure on this part to do everything for us that we could be doing ourselves. We're no, saying, I'm, I'm not asking. We're just saying, I'm just saying, you know, saying so I'm, like like you know the storm. Time. The storm's gone through. It's yeah. just like by the way, phase three is out. Phase two is out of power. Well, I can't send to the people. Well, That's all we know. Yeah. So I'm supposed to tell you that. Phase three or something. Right. They they don't have you, can't, you can't sign up for yeah. that. You can't sign up for that. Without a physical you have you can you can physically go. You have you to can have put an account. In. No, to get to get an email or a text, you have to have, you have to sign up for it. You have a personal account. You have yeah. to have a personal yeah. account. Yeah. And I get all that. Okay. Any other questions?